let's continue our discussion of equilibrium. At equilibrium, there are no observable changes. Chemical equilibrium is achieved when the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. The concentrations of the reactants and products remain constant. When all measurable and observable quantities are constant, what that means is things like temperature, pressure, pH, color, volume, all of these remain constant, even though forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same time, there are no observable changes. Now, what does the value of the equilibrium constant mean? When K is greater than 1, that means that the reaction is product favored. Products predominate at equilibrium. That means that this reaction lies far to the right and the forward reaction is favored. When the equilibrium constant is less than 1, that means that the reaction is reactant favored and reactants predominate at equilibrium. When the equilibrium constant is less than 1, that means that the reaction lies far to the left favoring the formation of reactants. The reverse reaction is favored. Let's look at this example. Is this reaction product favored or reactant favored? Nitrogen plus hydrogen forming ammonia. Remember, the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. This has an equilibrium constant of 3.5 times 10 to the eighth. Since K is much greater than 1, the products are favored. This reaction lies far to the right. The forward direction is favored. There are more products than reactants at this equilibrium. What that means is that the concentration of the numerator is greater than the concentration of the denominator. Let's look at this example. What we're looking at is silver chloride solid dissolving to form the silver ion and chloride ion. This reaction has an equilibrium constant of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Since this number is much smaller than 1, this equilibrium favors the formation of reactants, which means that the concentration of products is much less than the concentration of reactants at equilibrium. In other words, the reactants, which are the denominator of an equilibrium constant, are very large. That means this equilibrium lies far to the left. The reverse reaction is favored. This means that silver chloride is not very soluble. Let's consider this equilibrium. In the forward direction, this has an equilibrium constant of 4.72. Now if we want to know what the equilibrium constant is for the reverse reaction, all we have to do is take the reciprocal. The equilibrium constants for a forward reaction and reverse reaction are reciprocals of one another. All reacting chemical systems are characterized by their reaction quotient, Q. In order to calculate Q, all you do is substitute the concentrations of reactants and products into the equilibrium expression. When you substitute in those concentrations, that will allow you to know if the system is at equilibrium or not. If Q is equal to KEQ, if the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant, the system is at equilibrium. Q gives the same ratio the equilibrium expression gives, but for a system not necessarily at equilibrium.
all you need to do is plug in those concentrations to determine if the system is at equilibrium. If the system is not at equilibrium, then you can determine how the reaction is proceeding in order to achieve equilibrium. Let's look at an example. In this example, N-butane, or normal butane, is in equilibrium with isobutane. Normal butane and isobutane are isomers of one another. They have the same molecular formula, but different structures. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is 2.5, meaning that there is more isobutane than normal butane. Question 1. If the concentration of isobutane is 0.35 molar and normal butane is 0.15 molar, are you at equilibrium? Number 2. And if you're not at equilibrium, in which direction does the reaction shift in order to approach equilibrium? The equilibrium constant is 2.5. Here are our concentrations of an unknown system. Plug in the concentration of isobutane and the concentration of normal butane into the mass action expression. Remember, products over reactants. In this example, we get a reaction quotient of 2.3. Compare the reaction quotient with the equilibrium constant. If they are not the same, you are not at equilibrium. Since Q is not equal to KEQ, this system is not at equilibrium. What must this system do then to achieve equilibrium? Since the equilibrium constant is the concentration of products over reactants, and since our Q was less than KEQ, that means it was too small compared with the equilibrium constant. If Q is less than KEQ, there are too many reactants and not enough products. Therefore, this system proceeds from left to right to reach equilibrium. If the equilibrium constant and the reaction quotient are equal, the system is at equilibrium. There is no shift that has to take place. You have already achieved equilibrium. Since the equilibrium constant, again, is the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants, if we calculate Q of a system at a particular time and it's greater than KEQ, that means there are too many products and not enough reactants. Therefore, the system is moving from right to left in order to reach equilibrium. If Q equals KEQ, the system is at equilibrium. If Q is greater than KEQ, that means there is too much product and the equilibrium shifts to the left in order to establish equilibrium. And if Q is less than KEQ, there is too much reactant and the equilibrium shifts to the right. The reaction shifts to the right to establish equilibrium.